So at my bottom, I was cohabitating with another alcoholic. Again, it was a cycle I was in. I drank every day just to fill something inside me and to feel anything. It felt good, but it didn't satisfy. I didn't know that I was deeply suicidal at that point. Where my bottom took me was to a suicide attempt that also involved an assault. I assaulted my partner at the time. So after a life-saving surgery that shouldn't have even been possible, I went to jail. It took a little bit of time for me to even realize that I wasn't feeling a full range of emotions. And once that was revealed to me, I re it, it became a pain to me in my heart that I wasn't able to maybe trust as deeply or worship as fully. It was like, you know, being a face in a, in a congregation, being seen as someone who worshiped with their hands held high, but inside there was inner conflict, there were doubts, there were fears of being loved by God, being in community. I had not had community before. I grew up in foster care. I didn't have a family, so I didn't know what that looked like. My first time at the Avenue, I knew that I was home. I jumped into an onboarding class. I was asked to share my story. And this is the first time anyone had really cared to hear my story. I hadn't shared it before. I came away with this sense of feeling fully known by another human because I felt known by God. Sharing your story with someone in the church um, and two men in the church, specifically for me, that was huge. And having them respond with, love, affirmation, compassion. I felt known and also accepted. So these two gentlemen also knew of a counselor, a Christian counselor, um, who worked specifically with some areas of trauma that I shared uh, in my interview. They referred me uh, to her. The Avenue covered the cost for my counseling for almost two years. And this is really where a lot of my healing took place. Uh, there was a family that took me in at the Avenue, um, right at the forefront. It was actually one of the gentlemen who interviewed me for my membership. He and his wife discussed it two weeks after my interview. They asked me to move in with them. I was blown away, uh, first of all. Not only had I told this man all of the horrible things that I'd ever done and the things that were done to me, um, but he had heard those and not only given me superficial, like external compassion, but for him, he and his wife to offer for me to come and stay with them at no cost to myself. They gave me everything I needed at the time. I, I do believe that God's purpose for that was to give me a safe place, a home, to kind of come undone because that's what it took for me. Counseling was sort of God breaking the bones that had not healed right resetting them so that they could heal correctly. I began to be able to make eye contact with men in the church and not feel shame or fear and begin to make friends with other women in the church and not feel inferior or small. If I were truly exposed for who I am that they would reject me. I began to see that there were a lot of lies I believed. I know that that wouldn't have been possible without going to counseling. There's no greater gift than being saved, set free, healed, comforted, brought into a family, and put into a position of being able to give that back.